Welcome back to the Coding Circus. Today we are going to look at adding sound to our projects. And we're also going to go over a couple other topics that we've looked at in the past just to reinforce some of those ideas. And it turns out that they're really useful when we're trying to get some of our sounds to actually play. So let's dive right into some code and take a look. The first thing we're going to have to do is do some imports. We're going to do our regular imports, but then I'm also going to import uh, the proximity sensor as well as the shape sensor because we're going to use both those objects in our project today. Uh, I'm going to create three lists, which we'll use later on, and you'll see why we use them later. A box sensor, um, boxes, and some notes. And we'll come back to those. Okay. So let's talk about sound. In order to add sound, it's actually pretty straightforward. You have to have the file saved in your folder or use one of the files that Vizard has uh, located for you in the Vizard Connect. Fountain.wave is one of them. Vizard uh, knows exactly where that is, so you don't have to tell it where it is. And then uh, we use the add audio viz method from the viz class and we're going to add in the file fountain.wave if it's stored locally you would just put where that file is stored uh, if it's in a nested folder you'd have to put the folder address but you could just put the file name if it's in the same folder as the current file you're working on then we have some other methods that we can take effect on uh, we can set the loop for the sound to on we can set the volume of the sound to 0.5 uh, we can set the time at where we want to start in the sound. So it's, it's not the length of the sound, it's where in the sound that we're starting from. So if, we're, if it's a two minute sound and we do uh, 60, then we're going to start 60 seconds into the two minute sound. And then we could set the sound rate. So 0.3 would be, think of it as a percentage. So 30% would be uh, the speed at which we're playing it. And then we have to play the sound using sound.play, and we have to pause the sound using sound.pause. But if I put in here sound.play, the sound's going to play immediately as soon as the program runs. Uh, nothing else is going to happen. So let's just kind of see that. So that's sound.play. And let's see, hear it. Hopefully you can hear it. Oh, I forgot my whole Viz Connect things. Let me do that again. Sorry about that. I need to actually put in an environment, don't I? So let's put in a world. Otherwise, we're not going to have anything in the world and we won't be able to actually hear anything. There we go. So you can hear this kind of fountain sound going in the background, which is fine if you want this fountain sound to always happen. But most times when we have sounds, we want them triggered in some way by some kind of event. So in terms of sound, that's a lot of what we've done. Um, there's not a whole lot more to add to sound for just a basic sound. We could try changing the volume, make it louder. So I'm going to set the volume to one and we're going to set the rate to one. So it goes to its normal speed. And you can hear it's faster and it's louder. Kind of sounds like a shower now. But really, we want to be able to control that. So I'm going to add in an action from VizAct uh, that will only play the sound when I press the key F and then when I press shift F it will pause the sound. So let's see what that works. Right now when we first load it nothing's gonna happen. I'm gonna press F for sound and my fountain plays shift F and it pauses. Now I can also include those these inside of the parameter list for add audio. I don't have to do them all at once but we'll look at that later on. I think I'll leave them separated for now, but just like we've included other um, methods inside the initial construction, we can do that inside of um, 
our add sound add audio construction as well. So let's listen to one where we add in a sound. But we jump ahead a little bit in the sound. So um, we're gonna I'm gonna pick a little song here. And I'm gonna start with zero. And we're gonna set the volume to five. And we're not gonna loop it. Um, so that way we can hear the difference. So this is from Ben Sound, which is a great place to get sounds for free. Uh, it is the ukulele sound song that they have going. So let's go ahead and hear that. So there, that's the song started at zero. Kind of get the idea of that. So now I'm going to jump ahead, and instead of starting at zero, I'm going to start at 35. See, it jumped in the song forward 35 seconds. And then if I can change the rate here, I can make it play three times as fast. There you go, really fast. But also notice when you speed it up, um, by setting this rate, it also changes the pitch of the song. The faster you play it, the higher pitch it goes. The slower you play it, the lower pitch it goes. OK, so now let's go ahead and talk about uh, directional sound. This is kind of interesting. I'm going to comment this out so we don't have this sound playing in the background. Directional sound is when you attach a sound to a particular object. So for example, if we put a duck in this program somewhere and had it quack, if we weren't near it, the sound would not be as loud as if we were near it. So the first thing we're going to want to do, so let's add in our duck. And I'm going to use the built-in duck so we don't have to go searching for it. There's our duck, set its position, so it's kind of going to be off hiding somewhere. And then we're going to add in our sound, and immediately I'm going to pause it. So that way the sound is not playing, otherwise the sound will just start playing quack, 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 and it'll drive us insane. I'm not going to loop it. What I am going to do is, though, is do another keyboard event on key down and wait for the letter Q to play. Okay, so let's go ahead and play this. Now the sound, notice the command for the sound is different. I'm not adding sound, adding audio. This time I'm specifically attaching the sound to the duck. So duck.playSound. This is how we end up getting spatial sound. So let's play this. And then we hit Q for quack. You might be able to hear it. it's really, really low. But watch, I'm going to move closer to it. I have it hidden here around the, the door. There he is. OK, hit quack again. Much louder. I'm going to get down to his level. I'm moving even closer. And you can see, as I move even closer, he gets louder. So I'm going hit, to keep hitting quack, and I'm going to move away from him. Here he got quieter. And the further, away it move, the further I move away from him, now you can't even hear. He's super, super quiet. So that is a, it's a way of adding sounds within your program that are associated with particular objects. And the sound will be a, based upon how close you are to that object as to how loud the sound is actually playing at that. Hopefully that makes sense. OK, so that's basic sounds. Now let's kind of do some fun stuff with our sounds and go ahead and add in some other things. 
Uh, I think I can leave my fountain. Uh, I think I will leave it all. I think I will leave everything and leave my quack playing. Okay, so we're going to leave everything, and we're going to add in something new. So the first thing I'm going to do is add in a range of musical notes that I have saved. Now, in terms of file types, the sound will play any file type. So it's different than the sounds we had for the talk, where talk would only work with play wave files uh, that were mono. And the reason why there's a difference is because we have the talk working so it moves a mouth. This is just playing a sound. So right now I have waves in there, but it'll play MP3s, it'll play all those different sounds. In fact, I think, yeah, the ukulele was an MP3, so it'll play all those different sounds. So uh, I have a for loop here that is going to go from 0 to 24, so that's what the range 25, remember, means. And I'm going to add in my file name, but look at how I'm doing this here. I'm putting the name of the folder, Synthesize Piano Notes, and this is the beginning of the name of the file, and then I ended the quotes, and I'm adding in a string that is the value of the integer of x plus 1. So as we go through this, 0 to 24 is going to give us 1 to 25 when we add 1 to each one of these. And it's going to take this number and put it in parentheses, just the way I have it here in the string, and put it to the word note and add in the dot wave at the end. And that will effectively give me file names that are note uh, one dot wave, note two dot wave, note three dot wave. So I have 25 different notes. And I'm going to add them all as um, notes, and I'm going to append them uh, to a notes list. Remember that notes list we created at the beginning? So I have a note where I add the audio based upon the file name, I set my settings, and then I'm appending it to my note list. And that way I can get a whole bunch of files into one organized data set. So now I have all my notes in there. I'm not going to do anything yet to it. Now we need to add in something to play those notes. So what I'm going to do is add in a whole bunch of boxes. And we've seen this before. I'm going to do it with two for loops nested. So it's a five by five. So we've seen that five by five structure before. And I'm going to just add the boxes in, in space. I'm going to use my random generator to get different colors like we've done in the past. And notice here, I've taken the x and y values of the for loop and multiplied them by 0.36. Well, the boxes are 0.3 by 0.3 by 0.3. And I'm positioning them to be 0.36 apart. That will give me a little bit of space between the two different boxes. And then notice I added 1 to the y value just to give it um, a little bit of distance from me. And then I have it at, the whole thing at a height of 4, so that way it's a little bit higher off the ground. And again, I'm going to use another list and put all those boxes in the list. Now, 5 times 5 is 25. 25 boxes, 25 notes. I want those two to match, so that way I can eventually link the notes to the boxes. So we're going to do one more thing here. Um, actually, two more things we're going to add in sensors for all of the boxes. And we can do that with a for each loop. So for some box in all of the boxes, we're going to append another list. We got another list called box sensors because we got to keep track of all the sensors separate from the boxes. And we're going to create a proximity sensor around the box. And the box space is around each box is 0.36. So I went 0.358. So just a tiny smidge smaller than the actual space the box is filling up. Centered at 0, 0. And the source is going to be linked to that particular box that is in the array. So as I go through every single box, I'm going to link it to each of those different boxes. and um, create my sensor and append that to my sensor list. So now I have a list of boxes and a list of box sensors and a list of notes and they're all indexed together. So box 5 matches with note 5 and matches with sensor 5.
Now I have to add in my target to my proximity sensor. There's my target. And I have to add in my manager for my proximity sensor. Like that. And now remember, I have to add every single box sensor to my manager. But that's actually pretty simple because I have put them all inside of a list. So I'm just going to use another for each loop. And for every box sensor in box sensors, I'm going to add it to the manager. And my nice little for loop there is going to, for each loop is going to take care of that for me. Finally, I have to add the target to the manager, the target that we created, which is the main view. And then I'm going to set that debug mode so we can see our proximity sensors like we did in the past, in the last unit. So when I press the capital D, shift D, it's going to do the uh, debug manager. Okay, and then on manager on enter, enter proximity. So now the only thing I need to do is create some kind of event to occur when I enter into that proximity. And I called it enter proximity. So let me go ahead and show you that event. And we're going to play some notes. I'm going to go back up here to the top because I like putting all of my definitions for my functions at the top. So here's my enter proximity definition. Uh, again, another for loop, but this time I'm going to enumerate it. The reason why I want to enumerate it so I can keep that index as I go through because I need to link the boxes and the notes with the box sensors. And they're all going to be linked by that index number. So I'm going to do for every box um, sensor in box sensors enumerated and stored in the value of x. So x is going to go uh, 0, 1 through to up through 24. And I'm going to check the sensor to see if it's equal to a box sensor, if it matches a box sensor. And if it matches that particular box sensor, I'm going to keep track of its color. I'm going to use a mix here. Remember the mixes? where we can have it fade from one color to the other. So if I get its previous color and then have it fade to white for two tenths of a uh, second, I'm going to do it with a ease out strong. And then I'm going to have it switch back from white to its previous color. Those are my two color to white and white to color. Then remember, in order to make those mixes happen, I have to add them um, to an action. And I just, I'm going to do it as a sequence. So vizactmethod.color, color to white, vizactmethod.color, white to color, step one and step two. Set my action to step one and step two. And then I'm going to tell the box to run the action. But notice I'm setting the pool to one because the play, I want that action. Um, actually, there's no real reason why I have to set the pool. I, I could have just left that alone. It, there's no other thing going on with the boxes. And then finally, I'm going to um, play the notes. Now, the only difference that you might want to make here is you could technically attach the note to the box and make it so the box um, is uh, the object playing the note. And then that way, it kind of would be linked to volume as you moved around our grid here. But I didn't do that. I just said play the note. We're going to keep it simple, silly. OK. so. Let's go ahead and check this. I'm going to hit play. And I'll make a nice full screen so we can see it. So now I have my 5x5 five five grid that is all multicolored. I'm going to turn on my debugger by pressing Shift D. And I can see those boxes that I've created. But notice I made them nice and long. So they're the same length and width of the box, but I made them nice and long. If you don't do that, then it, it kind of gets weird in terms of moving to the box. You almost have to be inside the box if you make it short. So now I can move to this space right here and watch what happens to that green block when I get into the proximity. See, it turned white and played the note. Now I'm going to move over to the next one. So 
So I now have this kind of virtual synthesizer that I can play with all the different notes. And you could do this with notes. You could also do it with uh, sound effects, which could be fun. And I have a whole bunch of different sound effects on each of these blocks instead of notes. And you don't have to do nearly, you know, as many. 5x5 five five is a lot if you're doing sound effects, but you could make kind of like a sound effects board in virtual reality, which would be a whole lot of fun to play with. So that is all I have for you today. I will see you next time.